Now today I want to talk about Plex and using it on your NVIDIA Shield TV. So what is Plex? Well Plex is the most popular media server available. Now with Plex on your Shield TV Pro, you can host and access your own media, including movies, music, photos, and these can be viewed anywhere an internet connection is available. Now one question I get asked very frequently is how do I convert my DVD collection over to a digital format? So I can put it on my Plex server and not worry about losing that content if something was to happen to those DVDs. So I'm going to take a look at the WinX DVD Ripper. Now WinX arguably produces one of the best rippers out there on the market. And they've got two versions of it, a free and a paid version. And of course you get some advanced features in the paid version, which I'll go through later. So one of the main functions of the program is to burn video content to different formats. It can convert your DVD ISO image to a whole load of formats, including MP4, AVI, MPEG, FLV, WMV, MP3 and loads more. And then you can put it on your Plex server or wherever you keep your content. And if you go for the paid version, you can even try converting damaged DVDs. So in this video, I'm going to run through the whole process and show you how I update my Plex server with my backed up files. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Okay, so taking a quick look at some of the features of WinX DVD, we can see it backs up and rips your content to the MP4 file format at high speed and quality while preserving the quality and making the file 80% smaller. There's also support for 350 other file formats. So this is also a great solution if you're short on space. And if you've got a graphic card installed in your PC, it'll make the conversion process even faster as there's level 3 hardware acceleration included in the software, which takes advantage of your GPU and CPU. And of course it supports all types of content, including MP4, MOV, WMV, AVI, and loads more. And of course the program is so easy to use for anyone with content to back up. And the great thing is it even comes with preloaded profiles, making it easy to convert content for consumption on your TV, PC, Mac, NAS, on your Android or iPhone, and even your iPad and hard drive, and not forgetting your Xbox. And there's even a free version available for your Apple Mac computer. Okay, comparing the free version to the paid platinum version, you can see the free version supports DVD and ISO images, and even CSS and region lock DVDs. Old and scratched DVDs and even Japanese DVDs are not supported by the free version. You need to get the paid version for this. Now in terms of outputs, you can see there are some supported outputs for the free version. But if you upgrade to the paid version, you can see there's over 210 codecs and over 350 profiles supported. And DVD copy is not supported on the free version. Now another one of the big things you get in the paid version is the level 3 hardware technology, which aids in the acceleration of the conversion. And you can see the example they've given. A 2 hour video would take around 77 minutes to convert at 48 frames per second without the hardware acceleration. Now with the hardware acceleration that is slashed to just under 9 minutes at 387 frames per second. And I'm not even going to do the maths, that's a massive reduction. And lastly with the paid version you get the ability to edit your content. Now price wise you can get a light license for one PC for 3 months. Or you can go for the premium license for one year for 3 PCs. And probably the best offer for me is the ultimate license which is a lifetime plan for one PC. Now once you've downloaded and installed WinDVX, this is the applications interface you're going to see. You've got your license information here, access to log files and support email address here, and access to a help section and language selection. And you can check for updates as long as you're online. Ok so getting started is pretty straightforward, it's just three steps. And they even list it out for you on the front page. And the first thing to do is click on the DVD button to load your DVD, and then choose one of the output formats, and then just simply click on the run button. Now on the side you've got the options to turn on and off the hardware acceleration and that can be through your PC or your graphics card which is denoted by the Intel and Nvidia checkbox. And you've got a checkbox to use the high quality engine and deinterlacing and safe mode. There's also an option to control the amount of CPU cores when using the software. Ok to start the process let's click on the disk button and you can see it automatically selects my DVD drive and of course I've already got my DVD in there. And you've got checkboxes to auto detect, force UDF or force ISO. Now once you're happy with the details click on the OK button and it will load the DVD information. Now on this screen we've got a couple of options. We've got the recommended profile to use which is basically the codec that's going to be used to transcode the video. And I normally stick with the recommended codec. Now you've also got a slider here to the right. So what this basically does is it balances the quality of the video versus the speed it's created at. So LQ means low quality but the video will be converted relatively fast and HQ means high quality and the video will be created relatively slowly. 
so I normally put it in the middle, which gives me a good balance between quality and speed. And below the recently used profiles, we've got the general profiles, but you could use the AVI video, the iPhone iPad, Android phone pad, and so on. Now obviously, as this is the paid version, you are getting a lot of options here. With the free version, you wouldn't probably get as much. Now below that, we've got the DVD backup option, and then we've also got device profiles, and we've got the Apple device, and you've got all your devices here. So let's choose the iPhone, and as you can see, we've got all the iPhones listed down. From iPhone 13 downwards, we've got Apple TV, iMovie, Final Cut if you're into your editing. And if we go back up and scroll down, we can also see we've got YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo. A pretty comprehensive list, guys. Okay, back to my project. I'm going to select the MP4 video codec. And once I'm happy with those details, I just click on OK. And as you can see, it selects all the titles and it will automatically select the main video body. And you get the option to change the language and to turn the subtitles on or off. Now to the right you've got a window where you can scrub through the video to make sure you've got the right video. And below you've got the destination folder where you can select where you want to output the file. And finally up top we've got the settings cog where we've got a summary of our video options including video codec, frame rate. We've got the option to change the resolution. And of course I normally keep it at original. But you can go all the way down to 320 by 240 You can also change the aspect ratio. Again I keep it at original. You can also change the bitrate. You can also change the audio options below but I normally leave them alone as they're fine. Now if you click on the edit button next to the track, you get some more options. And you can basically adjust the volume of the recording, edit the subtitles layout, crop and expand the video output, finally trim the video so if you don't want to see the credits at the end, you can cut them out. Now up top you've also got an options button, where you can check the boxes for it to open up an output folder once it's finished the job, or even shut down your computer once it's finished the job, and you can change the output folder. Okay, so once you're ready, just click on the run button, and it starts off the process. You'll then get the following box come up with some progress information. And you can see here I've got time remaining 12 minutes. Now this time will vary depending on how quick and new your computer is. And also if you clicked any additional options in the menus. You can also see it's processing at 209 frames per second. Okay guys, I've spared you waiting 10 minutes or so. As you can see, we're coming to the end. Now once it's done, you get the following box telling you all jobs are completed. Just click on the OK and it will automatically bring up the folder where the file is located. And let's just double click to test the quality here. And there you go guys, it's running smoothly, quality is impeccable, and you can scrub through it with no problems at all. So the next step is to get this across to your Plex server on your Nvidia Shield. Copying the files across to your Plex server on your Nvidia Shield shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes, it all depends on your network speed. Okay guys, that is done now. The next thing we need to do is make sure that this media is viewable on our Plex server on our NVIDIA Shield. And to do that we need to open up a web browser on our computer and if you just search for Plex TV app it should come up. Here we just need to click on sign in and like before I'm going to use my Google account to sign in. Now you can actually see I am logged in, you can see my logo over here on my account. So now I'm going to click on launch. Now this will launch the Plex app on my PC and it will be connected to my Plex server on my NVIDIA Shield via my network. So straight away we can see the home page, we can see Plex Media. Now to access the media I've just transferred onto the Plex server, I need to click on more, and that will bring up another side menu on the top, and it's titled Shield TV, denoting this is actually the media on the Plex server on the NVIDIA Shield TV. So currently all the submenus are empty, but we're going to fix this, so just click on Manage Library, and I want to put my videos in the Home Video section, so I'm going to update that. Clicking on Edit brings up the following box, now you can rename this folder to anything you want from here, but from here I want to add the folder I put my media in. So I click on add folders and then I click on the browse. And from here I just navigate to the Plex media server folder and then I just select the folder I created within that, which is called movies. And then just simply click on the add button. And then we can save these changes. So if we click back to go to the home screen and if we scroll down to home videos, you can now see my media. So let's take a quick look and it comes up pretty nicely. So guys, that was my overall review of the WinX DVD Ripper. A great tool to back up your personal video collection. And the free version of the software is a great option if you do the odd backup copy of your personal videos. But do bear in mind the free version does take a long time to complete the job, whereas the paid version takes minutes. Plus you get the other useful advanced features. Anyway guys, if you found this video helpful, please do give us a like and do consider subscribing to the channel. And I do tons of videos like this weekly.